Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today it's finally here. The one year Camp Chef Flat Top Grill, one year review. You guys stay tuned. All right, so here it is. So listen, we're just gonna shoot it straight. We're not gonna do any fancy edi editing or anything like that. I'm coming to you as honest as I can be. Now this is about my Camp Chef experience. Your guys could be different. I got my fancy notes, so we can go straight through it. All right, I got a pros and cons list, okay? And I think the cons, I mean the pros definitely outweigh the cons. The number one question, would I buy a Camp Chef? The answer is yes. Would I buy the same flat top grill again if something happened? Absolutely. Have I been 100% impressed? Yes. So let's go over the pros and cons list. Number one, on the pros, plenty of space. I was very concerned whether or not we should buy the, the six burner or the four burner or even a two burner. But with that being said, the four burner for a family of four, two adults and two kids has been plenty big enough. Matter of fact, the only time that I ever thought that I've needed more space is when we've had a party and I just need to cook more food. But I think that could be said about my grill sometimes when I'm trying to do eight racks of ribs instead of four racks of ribs. So the space for a four burner is plenty. Two, it's very durable. You guys know that we probably flat top grill more than the average Joe between the videos and the family. We move this sucker a lot before filming, after filming, during filming. There's not many times we don't move it at least four to five times a week. The reason why I say that is because so far everything has been 100% sturdy. Now, I don't know if that's my construction job. I would not consider myself a, <laughs> <laughs> any type of construction Oh, I don't person. think you read the directions. <laughs> no, but the point is, is this bad boy moves a ton. It gets bumped into. My girls have uh, smashed each other on it. So this thing has been put through the ringer. Um, it's, it's, I, I would consider it very durable. I have noticed there's other brands and people complained about the legs being loose, screws coming undone, being flimsy. I mean, Besides my deck being uneven, this bad boy is solid as a rock. So on that pro list, durable, absolutely. So the idea of the pro that you get with a Camp Chef is it comes pre-seasoned. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. It comes pre-seasoned. That does not mean that it will stay seasoned the whole time. I've got a video of how to re-season your flat top grill. I highly suggest if there's ever a video out there, I'm 100% sold on my idea on it. That's just being honest, okay? Your flat top comes ready to use. Obviously, you'd want to clean it, per the pack or instructions, do whatever you want to do. Matter of fact, use whatever oil you want to use. I'm not going to get in that debate. We're talking about the pros. The pros, it comes pre-seasoned. And it, for me, the one I got was phenomenal. There was no problem. The problem is, is once you start cooking on it, you have to understand maintenance, okay? Your seasoning is going to ebb and flow. It's going to come and go, okay? So you have to be able to balance that. Don't expect it come pre-seasoning and you don't take care of it for it to look brand new a year later. You have to know how to bring your temperature of your oils up to be able to polymerize. You guys know about that. I'm not going to rant on it. But as a pro, it comes pre-seasoned for you to cook on it. Now it's time to take it to the next level, and we got that video for you right there. All right, self-leveling times two. We've had it literally probably, what do you think, 18 months? I know it's a year review, but no, 14 months? We all know about the feet on the bottom, okay? Because people complain all the time that my flat top grill is not level. I agree, but I move it too much and I'm not really worried about it. We just got done filming, so I'm gonna have to use a hot pad. I just learned this the other day by a viewer. I had no idea. I get complaints all the time that my flat top is loud. Honestly, I thought my flat top was warped. I thought I'd done something wrong when I was first started. I didn't know what, exactly how this model is gonna react. Turns out to be son of a gun. See if I can touch it. It's still hot. If you notice your flat top is wobbling back and forth, there's two screws, one here and one there. And if you didn't know it, that gun thing's moving to actually make your flat top level. I had no idea. All right, so there's that. So you got a two leveling system on this. They both work great. I wish I'd have known that 12 months ago. I guess if I'd have read the instructions, I'd have skipped it. Hint, read the instructions. All right. So there's a leveling thing. Since I've got it open and it's hot and we just filmed, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this, skip a step. The heat plate, that's gonna go on our, our next pro. The heat plate does a very, very good job of keeping your flat top consistent with heat, okay? I always tell you all the time, 
you can turn off your heat before your food is done because there's so much residual heat. And I think this plays a big part of it because it's so thick. And this bad boy is heavy as sin. So it's like a big piece of cast iron, okay? It, it carries a lot of heat. And for the viewers that ask a lot of times, here's a, one, one of the questions I get. Do you keep the grill grates on and do you keep the, the fire uh, protective plates on? Straight from the horse's mouth, Camp Chef, Camp Chef says this. Yes, they built this model for you to put everything in there and not touch it. That was their goal. And I get so many requests that I send it into them so I can have an exact response. And that's what, that's what it was. Some people want the grill grates removed. Some people think move, whatever. That's your personal preference. Okay, so now that I open it, you guys are saying, well, you don't keep your grill grates on there. Like I just said, personal preference. I will say this. This goes back to another pro. We're talking about wind deflectors. When I did the seven must-haves, you'll be amazed how many people commented and said, hey, how come on your must-have you don't have a wind deflector? And I thought, why would you have to have a wind deflector? And Bob, one of my greatest commenters of all, I wish I met him in person someday, said, but replied to another person's comment that says the camp chef was built different than the Blackstone. The camp chef has built-in wind deflectors in it. That's why we don't need it. And this is another reason why I love the camp chef. So the fire sits down a little bit lower. And then they also have this piece of metal that comes around that acts as a wind guard. So when it does get windy out here, and it does, we're in the Valley of East Tennessee, I've never worried about the fire going out. And I don't know if it's actually ever went out. I'm not, I am in a covered area, but if it's in a hurricane situation, I'm probably not flat top grilling. So for me, it's never been a problem. And that's a pro. We're talking about the built in wind deflectors. All right, so let's go to the grease trap. You guys know on the flat, on the uh, Blackstone, the grease trap is here. I said from day one, since I was in the Navy, our grease trap was always up front. It's not a big deal. You've got the little black thing here. It's in the dishwasher right now. Um, this is the hole that the grease comes in. I've never had a problem with it, okay? The only problem I've had with it has been self-inflicted, where the debris of the food has got stuck. That's been my fault, okay? Other than that, I've actually forgotten the grease trap and then the grease has been dropping on my, on my deck. Oh well. Hey guys, I just wanna jump in really, really quick right before we go to the con section. We're about to reach that 5,000 subscriber milestone, so I just wanna give a shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for the support. But in doing so, we're gonna pick out one random winner who comments below, and the winner is gonna receive a Flat Top King t-shirt and Amazon gift card. Hopefully you guys can use that to buy something for your flat top. Heck, whatever you wanna do with it. Thank you. Let's get back to the cons. Okay, so we ran through all the pros, okay? Let's go over some of the cons. The cons might be contradicting to the pros because there's always something that you like but you also dislike about the same thing and that's what we're gonna go over. Okay, so when you buy your flat top, no cover comes with it. You can either get a soft cover or a hard cover. If you get a hard cover, then you have to get one aftermarket. I do not know why. Camp Chef, if you ever watch this video, please make a hard cover that has your logo on it. I went aftermarket for my hard shell cover. It's lightweight. It's uh, my links are in the description below. I went Blackstone. There's actually nothing wrong with it. I actually like it a lot, um, but it's very lightweight and it keeps it all the, like I said, the pollen, the moisture and all that stuff off this. So as a con, when you buy this, it does not come with a hard cover. Matter of fact, it doesn't come with a cover at all, but I prefer the hard covers. Here's a con. This gets extremely hot, even on low. Let me re rephrase that or let me reiterate that it gets extremely hot even on low my best guess is the average viewer or a majority of the viewers out there probably have an electric stove when you turn your stove on medium or low or high it pulses okay so here's the idea when it's on low it comes on then it goes off longer than it's on that's how you keep it low when it's on medium it comes on for a longer period of time and then goes off when it's on high it comes on for a longer period of time then it goes off and it comes right back on, okay? That is adjusting the temperature. Typically when people get this, they're not used to a gas system setup. Once your propane or once your gas is on, it's on all the time. So with the heating element around the bottom, plus this being as thick as it is, it's very hard to keep your temperatures low all the time, okay? Since your eyes are on, all this does is build up heat. Now, it might take longer to get there to 500 than it would on medium or high, obviously. 
but you're still introducing heat at a consistent basis. And this thing can get screaming hot even on low. That's why I tell you, when you're pre-seasoning or re-seasoning, not pre-seasoning, when you're re-seasoning your griddle, whether it be before the cook, during the cook, or after the cook, I don't really worry about high. I very rarely worry about medium because this thing builds up so much heat, okay? That's a con. Let's go on the next one. I, I specifically worded this. It's hard to control the temperatures. Now, I don't want this to be like a, <gasps> it's true. Since this gets so hot, okay, you have to be very careful about when you put certain foods on, even at low temperatures. When you're cooking your eggs, when you're cooking pancakes, when you're cooking anything that needs to be at a lower temperature, you want to hit that while it's preheating while the temperature is rising. Because once it gets past that momentum, unless you turn your flat top off, it's hard to stop it, okay? Because it's going to keep building, okay? That's why I've always told you, although these are good, it's not a must-have. You have to see the things that happen on your grill for you to understand what's happening. Food burning or food not being cooked fast enough. I want those to be telltale signs more than this, okay? Another reason why the temperature is hard to control. Once you bring your temperature up, and let's say you're cooking something like a sauteed vegetable or a steak or anything like that, that can handle all the heat that this thing produces. So you're not necessarily worried about it as much. When you do two eggs, maybe a, a bowl of pancakes, you know, throw a, a portion or two of hash browns, that's not the problem. The problem is if you keep cooking eggs, if you keep cooking pancakes and your flat top is on low, the heat is going to keep building and you're going to end up in the higher temperature zone and your stuff is going to start getting browning faster. Okay. So that's important to notice or to note. The second thing about the heat, why it's hard to control. Let's say we have it on medium. Okay. Let's say we're doing fajitas. Let's say we're doing a lot of fajitas. Anytime your portion is smaller, this is able to keep up with the heat. Anytime your portion on your flat top gets bigger, whether it's full coverage, it's going to zap a lot of the heat that you built up down. So that's when you want to control your knobs to help build it back up, to offset it, just like you would on a skillet, okay? All right, speaking of heat around the side, around, around the whole flat top, they come out with these side tables, which I think they're phenomenal. These handles, obviously, I would not call them useless. They're actually my towel rags, but they're only put in by one little screw. If you put a lot of weight on it, if you put this much weight that the Camp Chef comes with, with this, you're going to break the handle off. So they tell you to move it with your trays, with your side tables, okay? You guys can see in this model, there's other models out there that has more slits. This model came with these slits. It was done like that to allow more airflow to have this cooled down, but it's not a very good design. These are almost useless. I keep tools on there. If you guys notice here during my recent cook, this is how far my water, my uh, oil bottle is because I'll keep my towel hanging here and maybe my gun here, maybe a thing of butter here to warm up a little bit because it just came out of the refrigerator. But these get so hot about halfway over, this is almost unusable space. So what I've done to counteract to that, plus all the other filming that we do, I bought a side table that holds a lot of stuff in it. This is where you prepare the stuff. This is where you can cut your vegetables. You can let stuff rest. You can prepare foods. Then you bring it out there. I think I did that on the must-have. This is absolute must-have. And it doesn't have to be this one. It could be a card table, a picnic table, anything to get your stuff away from the heat because it gets too dang hot. Okay, the last con, we go back to the grease trap, okay? Although I still prefer it here and although it's worked phenomenal, every time this is messed up, it's been my fault. I'm gonna tell you why. During the video of like how to reseed your flat top grill, we showed you that when you're cleaning your flat top throughout the cooking process, it's a good thing to have something on the side, whether it be a grease trap or another bowl to put your food debris in. Cause the hole here is so small that the average amount of food can get stuck in there. Scrambled eggs, bacon, a piece of sausage, you name it. So this is just like a little um, seafood pick that we bought at the store. I don't care what happens to it, it doesn't rust. Um, and I'll clean out my grease trap hole several times, actually all the time, just to keep it clean. Plus it gets in the corners and the edges, right? If you're really picky, man in the Navy, we had toothpicks. This is what they would hit you on right here. That uh, one of your uh, superiors would come by when you're listening, just want to pick on you. And he'd just take a toothpick and just go right in the corner where no way ever looks but like, ah, redo it. Here we go, I was supposed to go out that night. All right, the point is as a con, 
I wish the system was set up a little bit different. I, I understand the concept and how it works, but for that hole and for the debris, I mean, for the average person, that is pretty small to be perfect to where you're scooping the food off. All right, guys, so that's basically it for me. Sorry for the rambling. Like I said, I just wanted to come straight forward to let you know exactly how we feel about the Camp Chef one and a half years later, give or take. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. If you guys got to have a comment, leave it below. I try to answer as many as I can. Thanks.